button. And all right, so if you're not talking, please make sure that you are uh, mute your phone or mute your um, Zoom. And when you're talking, um, uh, you can unmute yourself. Um, if you're a participant, you can raise your hand and we'll get um, to you. I'm Dr. Jacob Frankham. I am uh, the Associate Director for Array Global Educational Services. And uh, really excited to be able to host the Zana schools. The schools. There's the Erbil School, the Salamania School, and the Soran School. Um, and uh, just excited that Jessica and Gemma and their colleagues are able to get on with us today and be able to help your schools out during this pandemic and be able to give you some guidance and support as you are uh, weaving through all the, the struggles that, that are presented with uh, teaching online. And that, uh, Jessica, I will turn that over to you and let you um, lead it from here. All right, thank you so much. Um, just wanna start by saying that I am really grateful for this opportunity to work with you all. This time last year, I was gearing up to come out and, and do accreditation in some of your schools. And that to me was uh, the experience of a lifetime. I fell in love with your country. I fell in love with your people. Um, I fell in love with the students there, the opportunities you all are providing to students. Um, with such unique stories, I just, I'm just so grateful to continue to connect with all of you in this part of the world. Um, Gemma and, and I um, are here in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, and we are the owners of Epicenter Education. And um, we also work for an incredible um, system of schools called Pinecrest Academy. We're STEM-focused schools here in Las Vegas, and we have about 7,000 students across our five campuses. So um, when we had the opportunity, you know, this past week to, to think about how would we want to give advice to schools who are about to embark on this kind of virtual world, um, we thought the best way would be to pull in some of our experts. And so um, Jim is going to introduce our team here to you today. But again, thank you so much for this opportunity. And um, after we go through some general information and our team can give you some of their best tips and tricks, we will stay on for any questions that you have. So thanks for giving us part of your Saturday and uh, we'll dive in with some. Jim is going to introduce our team to you. Hi, my name is Gemma Liberty. I'm so glad that you are here and we are talking education. I'm an education nerd myself, so um, love to spend my Saturday morning this way. Welcome. I do want to, first and foremost, if you wouldn't mind, introduce our three teachers who woke up early this morning and decided to join us. Um, and I just want to introduce them. If you would wave, please, when I introduce you. Uh, Ms. Sabrina Wiggins um, is a kindergarten teacher, and we invited Ms. Sabrina Wiggins uh, because, of course, she has an amazing heart for kids, um, but she also empowers them in the classroom in a way that is just unreal and that we are so proud of. So, Ms. Sabrina Wiggins, thank you for being here. Um, Ms. Nicole Rose teaches fifth grade at one of our schools, and... She's an incredible teacher. She, in her own words, has only been teaching for five years, but took on, um, took on a kind of just leadership role and decided that she had, you know, figured out a few things when it came to engagement and put together an entire presentation for her staff and led her staff um, in that presentation. So, so proud of such a you know, younger teacher stepping up. Thank you for being here, Ms. Rose. Um, we also have our third teacher, Ms. Malekish, who teaches third or fourth this year. I'm sorry, I forgot. Fourth grade this year, awesome. Um, Ms. Malekish is absolutely adored by her students and she just adores them. Um, completely. She stands out, honestly, as a teacher who differentiates in the best possible way and just makes sure that every single student is able to be successful. So we're extremely proud that, that they joined us today. These are truly three of the best teachers we've got. Um, we also have three uh, leaders joining us today. I'd like to introduce Ms. Nicole Tomeno. She is an instructional coach, teacher for a master teacher for a long time. 
She is a primary expert. So if you have questions, definitely K-1-2 in the primary grades. She's an expert there. She also coaches um, teachers and elevates them in the best possible way. All of her teachers love her K through eight. So thank you so much, Ms. Tomato, for being here. Uh, we have two assistant principals as well who have uh, joined us. We have Ms. Brittany Ives. She is a brand new assistant principal, but you would never know it because her teachers absolutely love her and she is um, supports them in the best possible way. Um, she is a bit of an intermediate expert. I know she's probably going to be uncomfortable if I say that, but I think that it's absolutely true. And um, she is just an amazing educator. So Ms. Ives, thank you so much for being here. And last, but of course not least, is Ms. Ives' partner, Ms. Bridget Nico, who um, it supports as an assistant principal uh, teachers in K-2, also a primary expert and a teacher in her own right that was just top 1%. So we are just so appreciative of you all for being here uh, and supporting um, teachers this morning. This is what you do, you pay it forward, so thank you. All right, with that, thank you again for joining us, um, our team and your team, and we're gonna go ahead and share a screen. We'll go through some general information, get into some tips and tricks, and of course, have any questions um, that you might have. So let's hop into this. Thumbs up if you can see my screen. Awesome. Hop back over to slide one. All right. So we wanted to go over some providing, you know, engaging education during COVID. Uh, we just did introductions, so welcome. So of course, you we call this remote live instruction. So anytime that you are live instructing your students remotely, that's kind of our, our term that we utilize here. We know that there's a multitude of platforms that you can use. It's our understanding that you, you all are utilizing Zoom. So we're gonna start with giving a few Zoom tips and tricks that we've learned along the way. So um, Bridget, if you don't mind laying down some of the Zoom ground rules that we've kind of learned along the way. Absolutely. And I am so honored to be here. And I do want to say that I hope what I say to you is going to pacify a lot of your fears and also hopefully give you some tips and tricks as well. Um, what we did learn from being virtual is that a lot of what you do to prepare in the classroom and setting up your structures and setting up your routines, you actually do virtually as well on Zoom. So some of the things that you want to consider is just that forefront before you even get online with your students is thinking through your structure and thinking through your routines. Also, the different part about being in school is you control your environment, right? And now your students are learning from home. So you definitely want to bring in your parents and communicate with them in advance as to what their, the household should look like, where the students should be when they're engaging in virtual instruction. So as you can see, some of our ground rules. Um, for parents especially, and bringing in um, those things that we want students to have at home, make sure that they're in a place like a kitchen or a living room where they have a seat, that their computer is in a good spot, um, that it's free from distraction, television sets, um, you know, dogs barking in the background, all that good stuff. So setting up that expectation in advance for families so that they know how to set their child up for success. Also make sure that they're prepared. So letting families know in advance, what do students need, especially our littles, right? We use a lot of whiteboards with dry erase markers, having them know, let them know what should students have in their area in advance to help them be successful, just like we do in school when we have all their supplies ready and we know where they're gonna go and where they're gonna be, have that, um, have that communicated with families. As far as being on Zoom, you want to make sure just like you set up in a classroom, how do your kids line up? Where do they put um, supplies away? How do they turn in assignments? Um, what do they do when they want to answer a question? Um, what do they do for, for you know, one another? So we want to make sure that you have set the ground rules that they know when they're going to be on screen, to be on time, that they're muted, just like we did um, for this presentation, that if they're not speaking, they're muted. So there's not distractions in the background. 
Um, when the teacher's talking, they're not talking just like the classroom, but making sure that we set those expectations right from day one and continue to, to reiterate those expectations as they go along. So letting kids know, giving a signal for when they can unmute. Um, I know our kindergarten teachers have these great little signs that they put up for certain things on Zoom, certain buttons that the kids can push in order to unmute themselves and such. Having their video turned on, having their video turned on and, and so that teachers know that they're engaged and they can acknowledge and participate in, in the instruction. And again, when can they talk? How do they show that they are going to talk, whether it's the raise hand signal or using the icon on Zoom to show that they're raising, that they want to answer a question or engage in, in discussion, um, setting all of that up in advance. Again, a lot of what you do on Zoom is what you do as a great teacher in the classroom. So I hope that helps a little bit and I know you're gonna rock it. So we're going to share next some technical tips. I know that you um, just, you know, you, you asked for just a rundown of Zoom technical tips. Was there, were there any questions we could quickly answer before we move along with those? All right, so Ms. Tomeno, whenever you're ready, thank you for doing this. Yeah, so hi everyone. We were just also wanting to kind of talk through some of the technical um, pieces in Zoom. And I know um, when you are the host of a meeting as the teacher, you um, have a lot more capability with your tools than your students do. For example, in your toolbar right now in our meeting, you're seeing certain features um, such as a chat or reactions as the participant. Whereas when you're the host of the meeting or you're the co-host of a meeting, you can actually see a lot more and you have a lot more to do as far as helping your Zoom session to go successfully and to monitor and support students. I'm gonna share my screen now if nobody minds, here I go. I, I just wanna be able to show you um, what I'm seeing on my screen down along the bottom. Can I just get a thumbs up to verify? Can you see now a security uh, little shield. Awesome. Okay. So a couple other features when you're the host of the meeting, and these are, are going to be a lifesaver and such a support for you as you're trying to keep that engagement level high and you're trying to facilitate your instruction. Um, a couple of things in the security tab to really pay attention to and to say, oh, thank gosh, this is here, right? Um, you have the ability, of course, you know, to share your screen but sometimes you don't want your participants to have that control without you knowing, right? So you wanna check the security shield if, um, if you have that on your version and you wanna check the things that you would like to allow versus the things that you do not want to allow for the participants in your meeting versus yourself, okay? So you can see on mine right now, it's defaulted to uh, if someone in our meeting right now decided to share, they could. If I didn't want them to, I just simply can untoggle and uncheck that. So it's not an option for my participants. I can do the same with chat and teacher talk for just a second. That is huge um, with your students when you're online in a Zoom session, obviously, we want students to participate. We want them talking. The teacher's voice should never be the, the voice talking most of the time during a lesson. The students need to as well. But I encourage you to explore this and use this carefully. When you're in your meeting, you do want to enable your chat for students to use. But I want to point you over here in this direction in the chat box as I pull that up. I have an option now as a host, and you would too, to control when and who the students are allowed to chat with at any given time. So if this were a time and we were doing a lesson right now and I was going to need them to have their full attention on me, I'm the spotlight speaker, I'm modeling, I'm getting into the big details of our lesson, the important information, I would not want students to have the ability to be chatting and putting things in the comments. So you can toggle that on and off looking at you know, no one can participate, only the host can do it. Um, and even you can direct the chat to who is it allowed to go to as the host. You can even change this. And a lot of our teachers do at the start of their lessons to say that students can send a message, but they can only send it to the host so that all the other students aren't seeing this long chain of, of conversation going back and forth. 
And whether you're a, a kinder teacher all the way through the secondary level, I think we can all kind of imagine the types of things and chats that might be going on that we would encourage versus those that we wouldn't. So simple tools like that as well are gonna be considerations for you. And I encourage you to practice it with your colleagues and just have a meeting to go through some of these settings, take turns, carousel, and practice some of these features and talk through them before using them with students. Um, another one that's been huge for our system and anyone, anyone else feel free to speak up um, is this feature of renaming themselves. If you notice in your participant area right now, you have the option under more next to your name um, that I have an enable that you can rename yourself. So if Jacob were to, to go and click next to his, it might give him the option to rename. For adults and, and professionals like we are having a meeting, we don't need to really worry about that or have any kind of uh, you know reservations about that happening. But with students, we need to think about that. We always wanna maintain the integrity of the meeting, make sure that the participants that are in the session are in fact the ones that are supposed to be there, that um, there's respectful interactions amongst all of the participants. So we've, we've um, turned that off quite frankly so that students can only log in to uh, their secure Google student accounts to maintain the integrity and the safety of everyone in the meeting. So important to check some of these settings that are, are defaulted in your Zoom version versus those that you might want to customize, okay? The other option that's in our version and check it out is there is an annotate feature for shared content that's available for teachers. Um, that depends on the version you have in your security settings, but in, inevitably what happens with that is teachers and hosts are allowed to even give students the ability to annotate or use a whiteboard type of tool in Zoom um, on whatever the shared screen content is to participate. So we could go really deep with a lot of these tools, but this is just kind of a basic overview. Um, the other option as a host that you have is if you do have an issue, you don't recognize a name over here, you're concerned about the security of a meeting, you're having an issue with a student, um, you do have the option to remove them from the meeting. Um, before you would fully remove them, it is kind of hard for them to get back in after that. So if you have a student, for example, that needs to take a break, um, that might just need a private chat based on something you're observing in the meeting, before you would fully remove them, um, I would encourage you to put them into a breakout room, which we'll talk about, um, just to kind of have that private conversation and get them back on track and mold them back to your expected behaviors. Uh, sometimes students need that in the classroom as well, and we always want to do that in a private and respectful manner to mold them back to that expectation. We have to kind of take those classroom experiences and what we're used to doing and say, how can they apply in the Zoom virtual setting, okay? Um, your participant tab, just like we talked about, just gives you uh, that list of participants in your meeting. It allows you when you have a larger meeting just to double check, make sure uh, that things look as they should. And you have some other buttons uh, that you can use here as well, including muting them. You have that control as a host as opposed to them doing it themselves um, just for those conversational pieces. And then just a couple of other settings here with your enter and exit chime. A lot of us heard a chime happening when new people joined our meeting this morning um, or this evening, <laughs> I should say. So that's just those little settings to explore. Let's talk very briefly um, about that chat again. Just as a reminder, a lot of these things were found under that security shield that we just talked about. But your chat feature, when you want to see the chat and what's going on, you would want to activate that button so that it would appear on your right-hand side. Um, I know some of our teachers are gonna speak to this because one of your big, um, one of your big asks and collaborative requests today is, is how do I keep students engaged in Zoom? So I'm gonna um, just encourage you when we come back to that with our teacher experts that you really focus in on ways to use the chat effectively again. My overview was more about the security and the integrity of the meeting where they're going to be able to give you some really helpful tips and tricks about how they use chat to keep students engaged, okay? Your share screen. As you know, when you share your screen, you can choose um, if you have multiple monitors that you're using um, versus just your one computer. You might have tabs open in certain areas of your browser that you might only wanna share that one piece 
versus having the students uh, or participants see everything you're doing on your screen. So again, it's that methodical thinking and, and that choreographed, how is this going to appear to students? Put yourselves in their shoes. What do I want them to see? What do I not want them to see as we're moving through the lessons? And it, it's been a big joke with our teachers and a joke, but also kind of a hoof because at any given time, and I know they could speak to it, there are about a million tabs that are <laughs> open along the top of their browsers with all the resources they're using, um, all of their prepared presentations in different platforms, and they're kind of just moving through and, and sharing their screen quite a bit. So just thinking about um, your options there and exploring it. There's also an important thing that you wanna do um, when you decide what screen to share and where you're trying to have the students focus. Down here at the bottom, I wanna encourage you to pay attention to this. This is huge for our teachers, um, sharing your computer sound. Sometimes that doesn't always happen naturally and you might need to check that box so that students or participants on the other side can hear your video. If you have any kind of important audio that goes along with the resource that you're using, you might need to push that sound through um, to, to make sure that it happens. So thinking about that with the resources that you're using. Um, finally, wrapping up a little bit here with our screen share topic, you also have that option. There's the, the main screen share button here, and then there is that little carrot on the side. The carrot on the side is again, only gonna be visible to you as the host or the teacher, but you can make the decision if you would like to allow students to share one participant at a time. So you're kind of just taking those turns and you don't have several trying to share their screen at once. Um, or you can, depending on what you're doing, decide if you would like multiple. There are some advanced options, but they really kind of summarize what we just talked about, where you're toggling and turning on the features that you would like to allow. For example, if I have only the host toggled right now and uh, Ms. Rose wanted to try to share her screen, she would not have that option on her toolbar. It would be me that would either enable or disable that for all the participants. So pretty powerful, some simple things you can do to really um, maintain the integrity of your meeting. In our system, it's been a, a really actually a wonderful tool in so many ways with the record feature. If you look in the top left corner of your screen, you can see that our meeting is recording right now and there's a flashing red light. That um, is a setting depending on your system um, and your tech department. We've had ours preset so that all of our meetings with students, all of our sessions are recorded. That's come in handy in so many ways. Um, Teachers have been able to record their, their lessons and their entire sessions to reshare with families. If they can't tune in for some reason during the allotted live session, they're using those sessions to repost on Google Classroom so that students can revisit or review the content later. It's also helped um, just teacher talk and administrator point of view. There's been times that we've needed to see a recording of a certain classroom lesson um, just to go in again and have administrative support or review safety and security protocols. So that's come into play um, a little bit as well. And as we all know, we're committed to maintaining a successful and safe experience. So recording meetings is something um, that I would encourage you to do, whether it's you've got your teacher hat and you're thinking about the implications of that for students as a teacher, um, and also um, from that administrative point of view, if that is your role to support. And then the reactions button. I'm hoping they'll add more because I, I really geek out over these <laughs> things. I love them. But uh, if you want to encourage your students uh, or you would like to today, here's something you love, here's something you like, you can always uh, throw that thumbs up and it'll appear as you can see in my window right now. Um, just to kind of communicate those nonverbal gestures and cues. Um, I know our teacher experts are gonna to speak to it again, but all of these tools uh, play into high levels of engagement. And that's been a huge challenge for um, our teachers as they've gotten started, but sharing these, these simple tools and simple tips and tricks has just completely um, just catapulted the experience for our students and for our families in this really challenging method of teaching and learning. So. Um, I think I'll, I'll stop there. I feel like we've thrown a lot out, but if there's any questions or anything, please feel free to let me know. And thank you for letting me go through some of those features.
Nicole, there were two questions. How much does uh, the emoji last? How long does it last? You know, I'm not sure. Now, Brittany just put one up and I see it's already disappeared. So I'm thinking we can say just a few seconds. Do any of our oh, teachers okay. Expert, no? Okay. Yeah, I, she just threw one up. Thanks for that, B. <laughs> she just threw one up for me a second ago and I saw it was there for a few and then it, it just uh, disappeared. So yeah, just a couple seconds. Uh, Jacob, were there any more questions you wanted to make sure we covered? No, I don't think so. That was just the one in the chat box. And Nicole answered it uh, right as I was bringing it up. So that was that was great. Thank you so much, Nicole, for going through that. Um, definitely one thing I wanted to just kind of mention and hit on that she uh, mentioned as well is, you know, just to really like take a breath and remember that like just setting up good practices and, and really taking the time to take your students through those tools is important. So to the administrators and to the teachers on here, like give yourself a minute to train the students on these platforms too. You don't have to dive right in on day one. Everybody take a minute to kind of get to know it uh, will benefit you in the long run. So let's move into um, some of the digital learning tools. Um, Miss Ives, if you don't mind kind of moving through some of these uh, quickly, they may not have the same resources, but kind of pointing them to where they can look for similar resources. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again for letting me speak today with you all. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you. I wanted to touch quickly on some core curriculum. Again, like um, Miss Laneef had pointed out, you may not have those same core curriculums, but when we started all of this, Truly what we were looking at is what do we already have and what can we already what can we utilize from what we already have in this digital world that we're all kind of venturing into. Uh, and, th and then from there, we kind of expanded on that. So these are some of the programs that we use um, and we were able to use some digital licenses within these programs. Uh, and it allowed teachers to use the programs in different ways that they maybe haven't used them before. That may include digitizing assignments and assessments, providing digital differentiation opportunities and providing students with independent practice opportunities through a variety of these digital platforms. So once we kind of explored through that, and our teachers are really the ones who um, were, were taking the, the lead on this, um, we started looking into some of uh, still the programs that we have and some programs that we don't have that really could improve that virtual instruction. The first thing that we did um, at our schools is that we looked for a learning management system that we could deliver uh, assignments through, that students could engage in and turn in their assignments and complete assignments. We ended up using Google Classroom, but there are several other learning ma management systems out there that are um, a great tool if that's what you're exploring. Um, I wanted to kind of touch a little bit on um, Sorry, this screen's jumping there. Edmodo is another one and Canvas is um, another learning management system. So it really is based on preference. Our system of schools decided that Google Classroom was a really uniformed, easy way to deliver um, these assignments to our students in a way that was uniformed. So students in one grade level for, to another grade level, it looked very similar. We also utilize some of our other blended learning programs um, such as AR, um, which you see on your screen in front of you, Reflex and Myon, which gave students an opportunity to access reading and math practice in a different way uh, digitally. And as teachers continue to explore, because really it's the teachers that took the lead, as I, I continue to say, and I will say again and again and again, <laughs> uh, I really just joined with them in that exploration. And we started to look on different um, blogs and teaching websites, and we tried to find different programs uh, some of which are shown on your screen, and you'll see a, a document pop up here in just a moment. Um, and we shared these resources with our teachers, uh, our amazing teachers, at the end of last year when we started all of this, and then again at the beginning of this year. And they started sifting through all of these different resources, because at first it can seem like, whoa, this is a lot. And really what we wanted to do is create a menu of choices of, of different resources that can be used um, for teachers to really amp up that engagement, to really help students engage in learning in a different way, which is a challenge in a virtual world. So as, as they're scrolling through this document, you'll see that it has the document name, or I'm sorry, the program name on the uh, left-hand side. In the center column, it kind of tells you how could this benefit me? How could this benefit my students in some way, shape or form? And then on the right-hand side, 
it does mention cost, which some of these prices and costs may have changed. They may not be free any longer. They were free uh, in the spring when, when we were all kind of thrown into this. Uh, some programs were offering some free options, but that may have changed. But it also includes some how-to videos, which that has been the key. Um, teachers have a lot on their plate every day already to begin with, especially when they're thrown into uh, a situation where they're trying to figure out a new way of teaching. So the last thing that you have time to do is really explore all of these different options. So what this can provide to you is a menu of choices. If something catches your eye, catches your attention that you think could benefit your students, you can just go to that YouTube video and check it out, see how you can get started with the different programs. It's broken down as you can see in the document by how it would categorized by how it could help your students and how it can be used, whether it's math or ELA or collaboration or engagement. Um, so I, I encourage you, we'll share this out um, and I encourage you to check it out and um, see if something really will work for you. And we're happy to continue sharing as we continue to discover some of these programs that might make uh, instruction for your students more engaging and, and more exciting. All right, Messiahs, thank you so much. It was jumping around because I had a slide somewhere that had like Google, Blackboard, and a few other learning management systems and I couldn't find the slides. So my apologies, but there are different, um, you know, platforms that, that do that same thing as a landing place for your grading and assignments and things of that nature. Um, Jacob, just as a note, I know we've shared that, that uh, chart out with many schools over the past couple of months and um, that is Miss Ives in person. <laughs> so that's who helped us get that uh, all together and allowed us to share that. So that's really cool because there have been so many people across the world that have been using that list because we posted that back in what July or August. <laughs> and so there's been a lot of people yes. using that. So yeah, that's that that's the great way of giving back. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love I love our team of teachers in our system because they definitely have the spirit of collaboration. So that's that's why they're here today. Another thing to mention is just um, when you start looking at like how extensive that list is um, of resources, uh, and so many of them are free. Many of our teachers are using an upwards of a dozen or more different online programs um, in order to simplify that for our students. Uh, we explored a variety of single login resources and we landed on Clever. Um, some of our schools have another program called Collegia and uh, in, in this, we love Clever. The students can literally just flash a QR code up to the computer. It logs them in, it has their Google uh, Classroom and many, many of the other learning apps that their specific teacher is utilizing for their classes. So definitely something you might wanna consider um, to get a single login where it's, it becomes their landing spot with all of the resources because it can be a lot for your KG students, your, your grade one students, to be trying to like go to so many different login uh, platforms. Yeah, and passwords especially. All right, so let's jump in to how to keep them engaged because oh my goodness, especially for those of you on this call that are teaching KG4, like KG1 and KG2 I think is what you call it, but basically your four, four and five-year-olds, six-year-olds, Ooh, that's why we brought in the experts today. <laughs> so um, we're going to start with a video and then we're going to kind of jump in with some of our experts. So Miss Tomato has me second guessing whether I clicked the right box or not and whether this audio is going to show. So this is just a two. <laughs> she can help me if I if, if I mess that up. Um, but this is just a two minute video, very quick to get us warmed up to engagement. This is a kindergarten teacher from Washington who went viral and has had several million views just based on a couple of minutes of her interacting with her students. So I'm going to press play and I would just appreciate if everybody would give me a thumbs up that they can hear it. Uh, and if not, then I will uh, fix that. The number four. Oh, I see Brynn is holding up two and two. That will also make four. I see four and zero. That is four. What kind of pictures do we see over on our number four? Can you raise your hand? What's a picture that you see over here in our number four? 
Grayson, go ahead and turn your microphone on for me. What kind of picture do we see? Hmm. Can you get your microphone on so we can hear you? Yeah, what's a picture that you see, Grayson? For some reason, it wasn't working. Oh, but you have it working now? It sounds like I can hear you. Yeah. So what's a picture that you see? I see a uh, class of kids. Oh my god! Ooh, a peach. Does peach have the letter T sound? Or no, not a T sound at the beginning. Peach. Oh, I've seen so many hands on heads. Yeah, that does not start with the letter T. Great job, spoons, back and bowls. Show me ready for the next one, kindergartners. Looking good. Here we go. Ooh, what about a toe? Does toe start with the letter T? Show me your turtleneck if it does. Or no, toe does not start with T. Whoa! I've seen lots of turtlenecks because toe does start with T. Go ahead, give yourself a pat on the back. Keep up the great work. All right, and spoons and bowls, show me you ready for our next picture. Here we go. What about a cup? Does cup start with T, -t or no? Hmm. <laughs> going to open it up now just maybe some things that you noticed on the video we wanted to show you kind of an exemplar of somebody who definitely has engagement down um but should we start with um some questions from teachers to our panel i know that each of our three teachers have kind of come with two or three of their like most um of their best pieces of advice to share with you today um, so they will definitely do that. Um, but Jacob, are there any questions in the chat or would any of the teachers now kind of like to just open up to questions to our teacher and leader panel? I don't see any questions in the chat. I think there was one that was a little bit older um, about a spotlight video. Uh, uh, Dilan, I'm not sure what that question is, but if you want to speak up, we can ask that question now or uh, any, anyone else has a question. Okay, can I explain it to you? Yes, go ahead. Uh, yesterday I was just checking out the all every, like I was trying to find every mistake, every misgoing thing on the Zoom, but I, I found out that there's a spotlight, spotlight technique, they call it, like when you just uh, right click on your screen and then you spotlight it, and it goes all over on the top of, of the ki of the all the kids uh, like laptops and zoom they can't change it easily so they can all their attention on the teacher jacob i would be happy <clears throat> to speak to that for just a second if you'd like absolutely yeah um, yeah sorry that i didn't mention that earlier but yes as a matter of fact it when you are um, the host of the meeting as the teacher you do have the option um, to spotlight the speaker. So you can find that option in the participants tab at the bottom of Zoom. If you were to activate your participant window in the side of the screen, um, just like I was showing you earlier when I had my list of participants on the side toolbar, if you were to use the menus under uh, the more, you have that option depending on your version of Zoom. Um, you can also do that in your window. When I'm looking at all of you, I have it on um, gallery view so I can see all of our, our little windows at the same time. You can use the little three dot menu at the top of a window of a particular participant and you can spotlight the video. And yes, in fact, what that does is it makes that video of that square or that person that student be the main one, the larger one that everyone is focused on, as opposed to just seeing several tiles, it allows them to focus in on that. So whether you're wanting to do that as the teacher during that time where it's, it's direct instruction, uh, this is the important information, or I've seen, and I'm sure our teachers will speak up to this, it's been fantastic to use that tool um, as an engagement tool, as a motivator, 
um, as, a, as a springboard to great student discourse when students are sharing what they're learning or sharing an idea. Again, it just kind of helps everyone visually focus in on what's important and what's happening in the moment. There's a lot of information about that and many more tools on um, some of the Zoom tutorials that you'll find online. And I know we have a few resources to share later as well. I hope that helps. Uh, Ms. Tomino, in fact, that, that my question was, uh, that was good. That was pretty good. And I tried it myself. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fascinating. But my question was, I do want to spotlight my video to the kids. And this is some sort of dictatorship Just I want them to spotlight my video but in the same time meanwhile i want to see all the kids like i don't i don't want to spotlight this for myself i said maybe there's a, some technique to spotlight this for them and me seeing all my kids what are they doing and what are they not doing okay so that goes back to i see miss rose nodding i think she's her brain and and eyes too the same way so a lot of our teachers have opted and have been fortunate enough to figure out that they should use more than one monitor, uh, more than one monitor when they're doing their Zoom. So for example, um, if I'm sitting here teaching this session and, and I have myself on my main computer screen and my share screen, I can kind of control my world on one screen, my facilitating world on one screen. And then what teachers have done is they've actually set up a dual monitor. If you have the resources to do that, it's a game changer. And I'm sure some of our teacher experts will speak up to that because then what that allows you to do is when you have your meeting open, it allows you to then pull or drag the, the student uh, gallery view, the student participant windows to the other screen so that you can simultaneously have yourself in view and in motion when you're sharing your screen, there you are. And then you have that ability to monitor your students um, and kind of keep that focus where it needs to be. That, all, that just really depends on um, the resources that you have, but we have several teachers in our system that have figured out how to do that successfully and we could support you in that further beyond today's meeting if you need it. If there aren't any other specific questions um, right now, teachers, can we start with you and ask just for some of your you know, best tips and tricks. Uh, Ms. Rose, would you mind at all just kind of jumping in and saying, you know, what are the best pieces of advice you can give teachers who are just starting to do this? Absolutely, thank you so much for this opportunity to be here. Um, I'm really excited for all of you. And one thing I just wanted to say, um, I know we have a lot of teachers here and there are a lot of admin too. And you're probably a little bit overwhelmed right now with all of the things that we've shown you. And I just wanted to say that it's gonna be okay. Just take your time and you'll learn as you go. Because I was not 100% tech savvy when this all started. And I feel like I'm pretty good now. So I'm gonna go ahead and pat myself on the back. So one thing I wanted to say was that TikTok video that we just watched with that kindergarten teacher, like that was so much for me. Like I was engaged with her, you know? And one of my biggest tips and tricks is so simple. It's be yourself. You know, like we all got into teaching because we wanted to help kids and we wanted to reach out and make a difference. And just because you're behind the computer screen does not mean that you can't still do that. One of the biggest ways that I continue to keep my students engaged is by having real conversations with them and letting them know that I'm still a real person even though I'm at my house and you're at your house. So I think that just building and fostering that um, community within my classrooms is something that's helped to um, spike engagement just in and of itself. Um, other things that I like to use uh, through Zoom are things like the breakout rooms and polls and the chat feature. So I teach fifth grade and um, one of the things with fifth graders is that they're they're like still young and sweet, but they're also kind of getting to the point where they're a little bit too cool and they don't wanna really speak up for fear of being incorrect or wrong. Um, so uh, I utilize the chat feature. I'll talk about that first. I say, if you, anybody has any ideas, type it in the chat. And so that way they kind of feel like they're anonymous to their peers. But to me, I can see, and I can kind of like facilitate a conversation based on something that someone says in the chat. Um, for the breakout rooms, um, this is something you have to be able to trust your students with breakout rooms because once you send them to a breakout room, you uh, no longer are in 
that room with each student. Like they're now by themselves with whomever you've put them in there with. So, uh, you know, research shows that when teachers do all the talking that students aren't learning. And so students need to be able to talk in order to uh, keep, like understand concepts and get a better understanding of what they're doing and what they're supposed to do. So having them go into that breakout room with just like one or two other people is a little bit less intimidating for them than trying to speak in front of the whole entire class. So I do um, facilitate breakout rooms quite often and um, hopefully like someone can talk more deeply about that. Like maybe we could even try a breakout room in just a minute to, so we can show them what that looks like. Um, but it's kind of like a nice cozy little spot. Like I give them uh, something to do. I say, talk about this question. Um, I'll be sharing like a PowerPoint with them or something. So they'll know exactly what's expected of them when they go into that breakout room. Um, and can, we, can we have Nicole be a co-host really quick and she can just show us a breakout room? Sure. Well, I mean, I don't know. Can we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Since we're on the topic, let's just go ahead and have a look at what that looks like. Because we utilize these in daily across our school for all the time reasons, intervention, special education, all sorts of all sorts of reasons. So, so let's see here. I don't think I am yet. I'm not seeing the breakout room option on my side yet. Our co-hosts, I'm not sure if, Jacob, do you know if your version of Zoom has breakout rooms? I can't hear you. I can't hear you, Jacob. Oh, I do have, yeah, there's breakout. I can see it in mine. Um, so or I, maybe can you, can you then come on and maybe show them those? Yeah, I would probably ask Nicole to walk me through it because I'm not a uh, expert at it. No problem. Um, so how about before we go into the breakout rooms, let's just set a little, um, you know, something that we should do. So let's just say hi, our name and what we teach or what we do. So that that way, when we go into the breakout room, we have a topic of conversation. Okay. Um, so let's see. I'm not uh I'm not seeing your your. Uh, I don't know why it's not allowing me to see my Zoom. Yeah, I can I can set us up to to do it. It I don't think it allows you to see the controls, but maybe. Yeah. Again, I'm not an expert. Oh, really quick. Um, I know we tried this at co-host they didn't have breakout room privileges they had to be the host in order to do breakout rooms oh okay then let me just make you the host nicole okay yeah uh, there you go perfect okay so um before we go ahead and go into our breakout rooms um like i said i just whomever you're with just go ahead and say your name and what you do um, the person with the biggest hand will go first. I mean, like, that's something I would really do in my classroom, right? Like, they would all put their hands up to the screen and, like, say, oh, my hand is bigger. And that's another way to get them engaged, right, to get to talking and stuff. Sometimes I have them stand up and pair up. So I'll be like, all right, everybody, stand up and then hand up, pair up, and go to your breakout room. So when I, when I go to choose breakout rooms, you'll see a little button at the bottom that says breakout rooms. And then it asks you if you want to do automatic or manual. And I typically just do automatic. It tells you, it does the math for you too, which is really nice. So I'm gonna put um, three to four people in each room. And then I just press create rooms and it just, it's like magic. It just does it for you. So some of the options you have at the bottom of the breakout room too is to just like push all of the students in automatically or you can have them go in um, after clicking a button. So I think automatic is probably the way to go. So I'm just gonna open up the rooms. Um, once you're in there, just say hello to whomever you're with and tell them what you do. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What are the odds, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I would love to hear from Mead. <laughs> yeah. Mead, are you there? Uh, oh, maybe not. Uh oh. Well, 
Uh, That's engaging. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you have the biggest hand. Yeah, probably. Probably, <laughs> probably yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, do we click leave room or does she do that? I think she's she does that. Well, I, would, I think it probably just puts you into a holding area. I don't know. I don't. Yeah, I think I think it can go both ways. Now I'm impressed with Google. Google's rolling out a lot of different things to kind of compete with Zoom. Mm. And our teachers use Google a lot too. Some use Zoom, uh, but most of them use Google Hangouts. Where uh, our, our local mm. district uses Google and our charter network uses Zoom. Ah, uh, here we come back now. All right. Welcome back, guys. So that was just a little teaser, a little taste of breakout rooms. Um, I did mute everybody. So if you were on a host originally, please go, feel free to unmute yourself. Um, but yeah, so I do that regularly. Um, when I am giving a lesson, like I'll talk about the topic for about, you know, 10 minutes or so, and then allow the kids to go into breakout rooms to discuss it or work a math problem out. I teach math and science. So I'll have them go in there and work it out and then come back together as a whole group. And so that way they're ready to talk about it because they feel more comfortable. They've actually done it with a partner. So um, yeah, I'm gonna hand it over to someone else, I think. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and make you back your host here. Let's see, Jacob, and then make the host. There you are. I passed uh, it and thank you so much for that experience, Nicole. That was wonderful. Good. Um, I'm glad you liked it. We're going to go to Miss Sabrina Wiggins, who also teaches kindergarten, just like the lady in the video. What um, great advice do you have for teachers just starting out? Well, where do I even begin? Um, first of all, just like Nicole said, definitely just take a deep breath. Um, give yourself, extend like tons of grace to each other, one another, your families, your children. Um, it's just, it's been an amazing experience, but it's been, it's been a little crazy. It's been a little, uh, you know, it, it is nerve wracking. Um, but once you take a deep breath and you're in it, you're like, wow, I'm doing it. Like I'm in here, I'm making history. We're doing this together. Um, one of the things, well, a couple of things, I, I was taking some notes, um, is when you're in zoom, it's inevitable that you will get kicked out of zoom. I've got kicked out of zoom numerous times. And when you get kicked out, your kids are still there, but you're not there with them. So what, um, I believe it was Bridget who had told us, gave us this tip, um, is that make one of your trustworthy, or maybe if you have a parent next to you um, that you kind of, uh, are kind of uh, you see often on your Zoom lesson, uh, make them kind of co-host. So that way when you do get kicked out, they can jump in right there and they can just, you know, calm the kids down. Okay, you know, Miss Wiggins will be right back. Sometimes technology isn't our best friend. You know, I, 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 go, I, I go that route with the kids. So make sure, or maybe if you have a student, if you're an older grade, if you have a student that's trustworthy, um, you know, just kind of give them a background that we probably, I might get kicked off. And if that happens, these, this is the, you know, what we need to do um, in the situation. And then, you know, typically I'm back on within a minute or so. Um, you probably will get kicked out of Zoom. Um, it's happened numerous times. But it's good, you know, the kids, they're, they're pretty calm, they're chill, they're, you know, usually when they come back, they're singing songs or, you know, they're talking, which is great because then now they're, you know, um, building relationships with one another. And that's another thing. When I first come on Zoom in the morning, I would leave my camera off and their cameras and their microphones were on so they can uh, speak to one another without... I mean, I'm, I'm there. They just can't see that I'm watching them. Um, and that way they can build relationships with one another and they can talk and, oh, oh, I see that you have, you know, so-and-so in the back of your, of your screen back there. Or, oh, I saw your dog. You, I have a dog too. And, and that's how we can facilitate some of those relationships because we're not in physical contact. And the children, they've been, um, they haven't seen other kids besides, you know, what they've seen on the screen or their family or things like that. Um, so to see other children that are potentially could be friends, so to speak, it's really cool that they're able to have that opportunity and to build those types of relationships. So just give them the first, I would say like maybe five minutes as kids start to funnel into the Zoom before class starts where they have and they're able to speak. Um, another thing that I do is the first thing is we just establish procedures, establish your expectations in your classroom. Um, being kindergarten, we're very visual. Um, so I do have my, I have my, uh, my, my mute and my unmute um, 
card. So if I do need the children to mute themselves, uh, they don't quite understand what that means. So in the very beginning, we practice what mute is on the computer. Um, I usually, I don't have one with me, but in my classroom, I have an actual computer, a keyboard, and I show them exactly where it is and what to push. And then I show them the, you know, the signs. So if I do need them to mute themselves, I'll say, okay, make sure you're muted. Or I'll say, oh, so-and-so, can you please unmute yourself? And I will show this. Um, so it is a visual, so they can put the two and two together. They're not quite reading at that point. So, um, and this doesn't last very, I do use it for the first, I wanna say, I use it often, but you don't always have to use it. Once they get it, you don't always have to use it, but I do like to use that. Um, be silly, be yourself, sing songs. Um, I do a lot of, we do a lot of breaks uh, where we get up and we sing and we, and we act silly. I don't know. I'm just, that's just how I am. That's the teacher I am is I am just a silly teacher. Um, we do have incentives in the classroom. Um, I have a Mr. Potato Head which of course he's in class right now. Um, and my Mr. Potato Head, he's just a character and he has all his body parts. And as the students, as long as they have, you know, they're following directions or let's say, oh, oh my goodness, we're not following directions and we don't have our listening ears on, I will take one of his ears off and put it to the side. And they do have an opportunity. Oh my goodness gracious, you are doing such an awesome job listening. Let me give Mr. Potato Head back his ear. I stick him back on, and as long as Mr. Potato Head has all his body parts by the end of class, we have a dance party. So I'm very big with music, and, and I feel like kids learn that way. I learn that way. I remembered my 50s because I, sing, I sang the song and for history, and um, so that's how, I, that's how I teach. That's how I learn, and I feel like um, the children always help me when I establish those routines. Sometimes I'll forget like calendar time or whatever, and they'll raise their hand. Miss Wiggins, you forgot the calendar. I'm like, oh goodness, you know. And I'll play along with it, or I'll uh, I'll tell them, you know, so, so you didn't remind me about calendars. So do I need to fire you? And they're like, no, 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 you know, just make it fun for them. Or my pointer stick. I'm notorious for putting my pointer stick down and not remembering where I put it. So I'll say, which one of you little sneaky peeps took my pointer stick? And they think it's hilarious. And they're like, they start pointing to themselves, I did, I did, you know, or just, I just try to make it just as in fun and engaging as I can. I know that I'm out there um, in competition with a lot of, you know, things that they're seeing on YouTube or, or different shows and things like that. So I become my own show, so to speak, is what I become. Um, I just, I just feel like it's been such a great opportunity and I've learned so much, but the mo the, the major thing is just to like, take it day by day, take deep breaths. Uh, you know, we do practice deep breathing in our classroom. Um, if it gets too much where I'm like, okay, everybody just, let's just stop right now. Let's take a deep breath, put all of your work down. And so you do have some kids that are struggling and they will cry and it's so hard. It's so hard. And I just stop and I'm like, you know what guys, it is so hard, but you know what? I believe in you. and I know you can do it. So we start our mornings off with our, you know, morning mantras and, you know, we say, you know, I believe in myself, I can do great things. And, and the kiddos, they repeat these. I feel like if they repeat that, they start to believe it. Um, and to be honest, it's for me too, because I, I need that. I need that self-assurance because uh, sometimes I think, am I doing enough? And you will have those days of doubt, but um, you are just believe that you are making a difference. And these kiddos, they're going to be so grateful and they're so appreciative. And, and you'll see it in the emails you get from parents. Um, I've just gotten tons of, of, of notes from parents just saying, wow, you know, it's just so seamless. And I just feel like it's, this is me, whether I'm in front of a computer or in front of my classroom of students, this is how I am. And I, I, I didn't change anything about myself. All I've done is change. Now I'm just talking to a computer versus a classroom full of students. Um, I'm still just who I am. Um, another thing that I did that I thought was really helpful is because we can't, at least I can get off track really easy, is I went ahead, I just got a little white and I just wrote down like a little task of things I needed to cover for that day. Um, and so as I was finished with something, I would just like wipe it off or just so I can glance at it, just had it next to my computer, just so I can glance at it to make sure that I was on track because I tend to <laughs> go off track out of the tangent. Um, so just to keep me um, on the schedule of what I need to get accomplished for that day. And, and I also feel like if you don't, if you're not able to get to something for that day, it's okay. Like, don't, don't put so much stress on yourself about it. Um, let it go. Um, you'll get to it. You'll get to it. And the kids will be, I, I feel like building those relationships, I think, um, is very important in the very beginning. 
and then you can add that learning aspect into it. But at the very, very beginning, just, just learn your kids, learn each other, um, have fun with it, maybe build some incentives. Like uh, I know one of my colleagues was having um, trouble with attendance. So she had a ice cream cone and then every day that all her students were there, she put a scoop on it. So by Friday, if they had all five scoops, I think it was Friday, then that following Monday, they were able, whatever their, their treat, so to speak, their incentive, it was either pajama party. So they got to come to class in their pajamas or bring a little stuffy to class. So they got to bring a little stuffed animal. So it's just building incentives. I know I didn't have that problem as far as attendance, but I know she struggled with that. And as soon as she um, implemented that, she never had a problem with the attendance again, unless of course the child was sick, but it wasn't because I just didn't want to go to class. So you just gotta find ways to make it a game, make it fun. Um, I don't, I don't know. I just, I, I, I just, I thoroughly have enjoyed it. I didn't know how I was gonna like it, and I was really, really nervous in the beginning. But and you're gonna have those days, but you've got it. I mean, you, you can do it. That's how I always tell the kids, like, we can do it. We're doing it together. We're making history. This is so cool. And they just get very, very excited um, about that. Ms. Wiggins, that was such great advice. Thank you so much. You <laughs> definitely come across. You jump across the screen, girl. Thank you so much. I okay, Gemma, you wanna... Gemma oh, can I do a quick, can I give quick credit, though? I Thank you, Ms. Wiggins, for giving me credit for that idea. But the idea of the helpful student and when you get kicked out of Zoom actually came from the wonderful Ms. Malekish, who is actually up next. So I need to give her street cred for that, OK? <laughs> Hi everyone, happy Saturday. Um, I'm Brittany, I teach fourth grade. First of all, thank you guys so much for coming, especially on a Saturday. That already proves how you know, dedicated and passionate as teachers you all are. And you guys will do awesome. I've sat here the last hour and everything that our colleagues have said is so similar to what I had in my mind to share. Um, just to add a little bit to the tips that I have for you guys is just, first of all, stay positive. Um, your students will be so excited to see you and just interact with you, even through a computer screen, it just the excitement is unmatched. So there will be hard times where you'll feel like you might not be effective or Zoom won't be working, you'll get kicked out or the students won't figure out, you know, the lesson or the tricks right away, but just stay positive and just be there for the kids and, have that positivity and that smile um, and the rest will flow into place like Miss Wiggins said. Um, spend time on building those student relationships and those connections um, before they went, um, sorry, like before they were in your class, we don't know how active they were socially with other children their age. So they might just be craving that um, opportunity to talk with you and with each other. So spend those times um, getting to know you activities. There's a lot of free things out there. Um, you know, favorite, favorite hobbies, get to know each other, all those types of things, build those relationships with them. Be silly, be yourself. Like the other teachers have said, I do the same thing. Um, another tip that has really helped me not stress is just less is more. The time online will go very fast and you'll feel that stress of, oh, I have two weeks to teach this standard. Don't think about it as a time limit anymore. Just quality over quantity for sure. You'll feel so good. Even if it takes you four weeks to teach multiplication, you'll feel so good at the end of that four weeks seeing those scores go up just from working with them in the breakout rooms. Um, I know Nicole did a great job talking about breakout rooms. I use that a lot too. Um, if we, if I administer a quiz and some students didn't pass that next week, I'll give a little assignment. One of those programs we use called iReady. Um, if your school has something that you could say, okay, class, go ahead and hop on to this. And then you can go into a breakout room with the small group of students that need that time with multiplication. Um, there's a lot of opportunity with breakout rooms. Um, and along with the less is more, 
take that for yourself too with all of these programs that we have shown you. I know I definitely did not do any of that the first week. It was very simple, just talking to the kids, showing them my dog, like you guys have said, little things to get to know each other, having fun. And the academics will come in. And with that huge list of programs, I found that super helpful. But just one at a time, you know, try one with your class that will build engagement and switch it up to a new program in a couple of weeks when you're feeling more confident and when you're feeling um, like you like you're ready to try something new, then the kids will be ready to join in right with you. Um, if you try to overwhelm with having too many things, I think um, the kids might feel that too. Um, something I do with attendance. Um, is about 10 minutes before class starts. We have them log in, so you're available on the Zoom. And I have just a do now task waiting for them. Um, it's not required, but I just switch it up. It might be a math riddle. It might be this game, it's called Boggle. It's just some random letters on the screen and challenge who can, who can build the most words before class begins. And that has helped me with the student engagement of getting to class on time virtually because they want to log in and see what that, what that little task will be to see who can build the most words. And they love sharing, you know, how many words they build or if it's a math riddle, who can find out the answer or even just a writing prompt reflecting on your day. They love sharing stories. Um, oh, another tip I put is to collaborate. If you are working with teachers that teach the similar grade levels to you, share ideas. My team that I'm on, we split up our responsibilities. Um, and so for example, my colleague will plan math and she'll give us ideas for our math lessons for the week. And we still have that freedom to make it our own and add some things to it. Um, but I found that just collaborating and sharing ideas, I mean, Teachers all get better from stealing from each other. I know I steal from everyone too. So um, don't be afraid to ask if you need ideas and um, someone on your team could be doing something that was super fun and you might wanna implement, implement that into your Zoom the next week because it was just so fun for the kids. Um, keep it simple at first, just as simple as saying, you know, thumbs up if you're loving, you're loving this, it's so simple for you. Thumbs to the side if you need a little more help. Thumbs down if you have no idea. And just make it fun and silly. Like don't, um, don't call out the kids who have thumbs down, but just be like, thank you for your honesty and just build that, build that connection in a safe space to where everyone's feeling comfortable. If they don't get it, they'll let you know. You guys can keep working on it. Um, I also really like playing Jeopardy. There's a website called Jeopardy Labs that's out there. And there's a bunch of Jeopardy games that are already made with topics of the, of the grade level you teach. So they love to um, have little friendly contests any chance we get. Um, I also have some incentives like Miss Wiggins does. So depending on the incentives you liked to have in place when you were teaching in person, you might be able to implement some incentives virtually. Um, my students earn points for various behaviors and then they can redeem those points on Fridays for different incentives. So that's the system that has worked for me is just they save up their points and they can use those points for various things. And um, having those incentives, I feel has really helped my engagement a lot as well. So. Thank you so much, Ms. Malekish. Yes. We so appreciate you, that was wonderful. What Thanks we're going to do is my we rambling. <laughs> no, it wasn't rambling. Like we oh, definitely appreciate our educators who came on to give those tips. We're going to wrap up with um, just sharing a few other ways that if you need help or assistance as you're moving through this or, or anything in education. And then we're actually going to stay on for a few minutes for anybody who might want additional tips on attendance or other things of that nature. So I'm just going to share my screen one more time. Um, when I just be respectful of your time. We are um, the number oh. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much to this team. These are our people. Um, just reminders to stay connected with your community as you are going through this journey. 
things like digital recess, having the students come on at a time where it can just be free time for them. You can make it thematic. You can have show and tell, favorite pet day, favorite project from the week. Um, live online parent meetings. Don't forget your parents and all of this. They need time to just speak with the leaders or speak with the teachers. Virtual assemblies, video announcements, and virtual school tours can all be ways to keep your community connected. Um, we wanted to end before we open up with any other questions with um, how uh, we are your partners here at Epicenter Education. We offer a multitude of services. Our mission is to serve students, educators, and leaders by providing quality products and engaging professional development. So today's workshop was kind of a free uh, like taste on how we can help um, educators across the world. We'll continue connecting with educators all the time, but we also offer other services, um, instructors, programs, and products. We also provide professional development for all kinds of different strands for teachers as well as administrators. So you see there, student engagement is one of our strands. Um, next one. So if any teacher you know, takes all of our PD from that strand, they, we also certify them uh, with say a teaching competency certification. And we also offer for your teachers who are already just knocking it out of the park, doing very well, we have an internationally certified accomplished teacher program along with Array Global Educational Services um, to help them take their teaching up a notch. And so if you would, if you do need any other help, um, as you can see, we um, have a, an, an incredible group of educators here. We know that you have incredible educators there. I know that firsthand. And so if you do want to connect or get any training on any of those topics as you're building out your focuses, I know your school had uh, you know, a pretty rich focus on some of the STEM concepts as well, science and things like that as well. And so if you need any assistance, always feel free to reach out to Array Global or Epicenter Education and we can certainly um, get you any help or assistance that you need. That is kind of our spirit of how we operate. I hope you can see that today is our educators are just always willing to share and we love to connect um, globally. We are going to stay on for a few minutes. If anybody has specific questions, feel free to type it in the chat um, or ask any of our panelists here today and, um, and we'll stay on for any questions that you have. Other than that, I know I, I'm sure Jacob would echo this as well. We're just grateful that you came on today. We wish you the best of luck as you embark on this journey into the virtual world. And just know that you literally have schools around the world that are rooting for you, that have been through this. And um, we will make sure that you get today's presentation as well as uh, contacts so that you can just reach out if you want to reach out to our kindergarten teacher, KG teacher, our fifth grade teacher, fourth grade teacher, or any of our leaders. Um, we are collaborative and willing to help however we can. Yeah, thanks, Jessica. Thanks, Gemma. And thanks, everyone else for being part of it. It's just a pleasure to, to hear a lot. I learned some things, too, and I thought I was pretty good at some of these ideas and thoughts. But uh, there are things that I'm already going to send to my teachers um, that I work with. So, yeah, any questions would be great to be able to specifically pinpoint anything that we can help you uh, be successful during this this pandemic. It looked like we have one question regarding maybe some additional ideas on how to take attendance and Nicole, it seemed like you were uh, ready to field that. Yeah, I got it figured out finally. I tell you what, the first few weeks of Zoom was really difficult for me to figure out like who was there and who wasn't there because you can't see all the kids' faces at the same time. So you're like trying to learn their face, trying to learn their name, and you're scrolling through all of these tiles. And it's just like, a, it's a little bit overwhelming. So oh, what I do, um, I'm not sure what type of attendance um, tool you guys are using, but we use Infinite Campus. And so on the side, I have a roster of my kids. And then as they're in class doing a bell ringer, kind of like Brittany was saying, she has like those warm ups. We have uh, something called a bell ringer where the kids are expected to do an activity as soon as they log in. And so as they're doing that, if you go to your participants window, it, you can see a little box that says find participant. And you can just start typing the very first letter of that student's name. And as soon as you see them, you can move on to the next one. And so I just cross reference and I start to type in their name. And then if I don't see them right away, I just mark them as absent and I don't save it until 
um, you know, it's like 8.02 or 8.03, maybe, you know, sometimes I give them a little grace period, 8.05. Um, but yeah, that's, that's been a tremendous help for me. So that's, that's something I use on a daily. Any other questions or even ideas that you all would share with us um, that you have, you know, thought about as we've been moving through this? So can I say something? Yes, of course. Okay. First of all, thank you for your time. It was very, very helpful. I had a small idea like we can use. You don't need much equipment. It can be used with small whiteboards like the ones you like an A4 size or just A4 papers. You can have uh, little quizzes or little questions inside the chat room and you will be like, write it down on the paper or write it down on the board and count to three. And then like two is two, two plus two is four. Like some of them write three, some of them write four. Like I count to three and you put up your whiteboard or you uh, put up your uh, A4 paper and you see who's correct. They get stars, they get like these kind of, these little small ideas. It's not very effective. It, it just moves the kids. It draws their attention to you. Uh, that's my point, actually. I don't know if, if it works, if you guys think it's good or not, but I think it's very good to use those kind of tricks. I, I can build on your idea so far. Definitely. We use whiteboards in my classroom. I teach math, fifth grade math. And so um, like we'll do the uh, something called showdown. It's a Kagan strategy. And so we say three, two, one, showdown. And then everybody has to hold up their whiteboard with their answer. Exactly. Just like that. Yes, and it is very effective. Um, sometimes I do like a race. Um, for whatever reason, the kids love to race and like to have those little competitions and things like that too. So it is very effective and it's a great way to get participation. So I think that it, it all absolutely goes back to hearing all of the ideas today, hearing um, and seeing that amazing exemplar video of, of that teacher that went viral. The one thread that's coming around and every idea and every turn with this and virtual learning is providing students opportunities to respond. So whether you're um, going to use the, the very simple already provided tools in your Zoom platform, like the chat, um, like just simple gestural responses, um, research backs that right up. And it's just about being creative in how can I create um, at the maximum number of, of opportunities for my students to respond as possible. So holding yourself accountable for that um, when you're facilitating your instruction and weaving in those kinds of tips and tricks that you're comfortable with, high level of student participation is gonna give you that high level of engagement. It's gonna give you those positive interactions with your students. You'll have to redirect uh, less frequently. So it all kind of comes back to picking and choosing and utilizing those tools. Great contributions from everybody today. This was an amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. I think using the whiteboards is an amazing idea. I do that all the time as well. Just have them showing their whiteboard with the answer. It really helps the teacher check in on that student engagement and that they're participating. Um, or if you're having them work in teams, you can still have everyone solve it on their whiteboard and then maybe just ask a few of them to send your, their answer in the chat to you. Like if you wanted to check for accuracy at the end, I think it's a great idea. Um, something else I wanted to mention as well is that uh, my colleague and I, Ms. Patel and I, she, she, it was actually her idea, so I'm going to give her the street cred, like Bridget said, um, but she has the kids take the computer screen and like point it down like this so that she can um, have a look at what they're doing. And so um, some of the kids have uh, figured it out to put one camera on their face and one camera on their work. But, you know, we teach um, fifth graders and so they are trying to get away with some things. It's not like the kindergarten first graders where they're like so into it. Um, so we do sometimes have them point their cameras down so that we can watch them writing in their notebooks or their math journals or whatever it is that they're doing to just kind of keep tabs on them. Love it. If you, um, we're going to have some of our team members are putting their uh, information, their their name and, and grade level or, or position and email over in the chat. 
We also included our information info at epicentereducation.com. Um, feel free to email any of our team or, or us here at Epicenter Education if you need any tips as you're moving forward. Okay, thanks again. I think we're about ready to wrap it up. Okay, sounds good. And again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us, uh, Sokar and your team. Please um, let us know if we can help or if you have ideas. We'd love to hear some of your ideas and your successes that are going on because you have many students in several different schools and we wanna be here to help and support you throughout this process. Um, and so again, good luck and thank you. And I'll send a video on to everyone um, so they can review it. It was, it was really, really outstanding. It was excellent presentation, uh, great, great information to really help us out, uh, provide a quality, a quality instruction, quality education for all of our students. So thank you again, and everyone have a great weekend and uh, uh, stay healthy. Thank you all, good luck.